Welcome to Watercolors with Caroline, lesson number seven. We're going to paint some smiley little alpacas today. Kind of fun to paint. And I'll start with just a little lesson on how to do the background wet in wet for the sort of fuzzy look of the alpaca's fur. And for you, those of you that are wondering why these YouTube videos are so long, these are based on Zoom videos that I made for my class and they paid to take the Zoom video. And with that, they get the instructions, written instructions, color pictures, help from me. And of course they can chat to me live on Zoom. So that's why they're so long. I've edited them a little bit, but left the rest of the video up there for them. And the rest of you get to enjoy that for free. I have one more class left in this series next week, which will be Christmas cards, winter paintings. And after that, I will try and upload a few little 15 minute videos on short painting subjects such as maybe how to paint a tree or a leaf or something like that. Okay, let's uh, get started on our alpacas. So for this portion, we're going to practice how to do the background for the alpaca. And I suggest you get a piece of watercolor paper, good quality that you're going to use for your final painting. This kind of background really doesn't work on the student quality paper you need, 100% cotton paper. I advise 140 pounds. I like ash paper, that's what I've used for many years and I'm just familiar with it. Now for this alpaca, we're going to wet the whole background of and on. I just have scrap paper here. I'm gonna, I suggest you do this on scrap paper first. So just imagine that this, this line I'm going to put on here is the neck of the alpaca. I'm going to put it on kind of hard so you can see it. I wouldn't draw that hard on a painting. And I'm going to wet everything, the background, the alpaca, everything that's going to be painted. And what I want from the background is a nice fuzzy edge to the al alpaca. I've picked alpacas that are a whitish color, off-white, but a creamy color so that they really stand out against the background. And a key thing is to let your water soak into your paper. If you've got 100% cotton paper, about 140 pounds, it needs a couple of minutes to soak in. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit too wet. You're going to have too much flooding happening. I'm going to wet this piece as well, just to have one that's been wet longer to see if we get a different effect if it's stayed wet long and you need to make sure it is wet, not dripping, don't want water dripping off of it, but tip it, make sure it's shiny everywhere and uh, you're ready to go. Now I like to mix up my paints after I've wet the paper for two reasons. One, I've got lovely clean brush and clean water to start with for my background and it makes, it forces me to give it a couple of minutes to soak in if I then go and mix my colors. And for this background, I've used a mixture of different colors. I have some cerulean blue. Mine is an M. Graham cerulean blue. All, these are all artist quality paints. You can have a little bit of cobalt blue. And I think this is a Daniel Smith cobalt. And I, my old favorite, I've got Daniel Smith ultramarine blue and Daniel Smith burnt sienna. I love those two mixed together to make a lovely warm gray color. Going heavy on the blue for the background. And these are all colors that I will be using or we will be using when we paint. We'll be using these colors in the alpaca, especially the siennas, raw sienna, burnt sienna. And I, I don't want the background too staining in case I want to lift anything off. So I'm avoiding my staining colors. I do know that the ultramarine and burnt sienna will lift really well. So I've got those mixed up and that's given that water a little while to soak in. Now, the reason I put the line here for imagining the neck of the alpaca is when you put your background in, you don't want to go up against the line because the paint's gonna flood in and it's gonna make your alpaca's neck tiny. So you need to start your wash about a centimeter if you're metric away from the line, your pencil lines, which should be really light, or if you are imperial, sort of a bit more than a quarter of an inch, between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch 
away from the neckline or the face or the ears or anything else and practice that on your practice paper. You can, your choice, you can have your background all one color, a dark blue or a dark gray. I kind of like picking up a little bit of this color and that color and different colors to have them all mixed together in the background. And I'm going up here just to demonstrate the edges and the different colors. This was mostly my cerulean blue here with a dirty paintbrush. I had not washed my paintbrush between getting the gray wash off of my tray. The reason is I do not want to add any more water to this. It will make it too watery. If you want a good effect, your paint has to be less watery than your background. If your paint is more watery than the background, it will just flood into the background. What you want is paint that has not too much water in it at all, so that when, see, I'm going to get some paint directly from here onto my brush, which is already wet, and put it on here. It's very dark, but that way the water will flood more into the paint rather than paint flooding into the water. And that's how you can control your background and stop it flooding into your alpaca too much. It will dry very much lighter, so you can go quite dark with your background because your alpaca will stand out as being beautifully light against that dark background. And if your background is wet, that means you can work fairly slowly and turn this around as if this was the top of my alpaca. Say this was his ear right here. I still have lots of time to work around the alpaca on that wet background, you know, going carefully around the ears and say the, the nose, the rest of the neck. I just have to keep an eye on the background to make sure it hasn't dried out too much. If I see it's dried out, then I should just wait. You can always re-wet things later. But if it is still wet and you feel that some areas are not dark enough, you can charge those areas with some paint, not water. Do not get too much water on your brush for this. Now, this one's been sitting here for a while, so I'm just going to experiment with this one. We get the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue gray. I'm just going to put that on this one and see how I can get that fuzzy edge. And I can, it's really lovely. Let's see if we can zoom right in. And if you look at this one, where I imagined that the alpaca's ear would be, this is going to dry just like fur coming out. So before you start painting your alpaca, I highly recommend you practice on some scrap paper, good paper. Don't practice on a student quality unless you're going to struggle to paint a student quality alpaca on student quality paper, I mean. It's going to be very difficult with this method. So let's uh, get into the painting details. If you are taking my class, if you are a student in my class, I have sent you the details. I've sent you the um, drawings, drawings that you can use, color photos, paint mixes that, that will work. And that's what you get for being part of my class. And I've really enjoyed that with all of you this session. So let's... Uh, Let's get painting. So, so welcome to Painting Alpacas. We're going to work on the background and we're going to work really almost all wet in wet. What I want to get for this background is a sort of a fuzzy look to the fur as it meets the background. So it's, it's quite a tricky, quite a tricky way to work. So just watch. Um, while I, I do that and see if I can see if I can do it. It's worked for all the other ones. So let's make sure that I can get it to work for this one. Now I'm going to grab a bigger brush. Grab a bit of a mop brush here and I want to wet everything. Um, I don't need to wet the eyes. I want them to stay fairly crisp, but I don't think it matters if they get wet 
because I'm going to work on the background. I did on the first ones kind of avoid the eyes and the nose, but I'm pretty sure I won't be getting very close to them. And the first time I did it, the background was too light, so I had to come in and darken it. It, it dries so much lighter. That makes it really difficult to judge. I'm just going to tip it a little bit to make sure. Oh, I've got a big dry patch there that would be disastrous. So we want to get rid of that. If you're wetting your background, make sure you do that tip. Tip the paper to the light and make sure you've got no dry patches. And no, and no runny patches either. Like, you know, make sure the there's not any big puddles sitting on your paper. You don't want a big puddle anyway. I'm going to grab a Kleenex. Um, always have a Kleenex handy to mop up any extra. And I want for this background, I want um, the the cool blues and the and the maybe warm grays. I want a sort of selection. So I'm going for cerulean blue is one of those cool blues. I bring my palette over a little bit. Uh, but I want to warm it up just a little bit with some cobalt blue. I don't want it too, too um, cool. I want this a muted kind of a background. So that's going to be one of my blues. Uh, the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for that nice warm gray in the background. And if you're doing backgrounds that you want to fade into the background, obviously, uh, don't use your strong, intense colors or your warm colors too much. Like don't have a bright pink or a bright orange or bright yellow unless you are very intentionally wanting that color in there. And then you have to adjust the value so that the background is not dominating the picture in any way. So I'm using ultramarine blue, sepia, and phthalo blue as well. So I'm really mixing up these different blues and grays. That's another thing. You can have your background sort of all analogous tones, colors that are similar, but it's nice if you vary them a little bit so that it's not all just one boring color. So I've got phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. So I've got my ultramarine blue, which is a lovely basic blue, warmish blue, and then the phthalo is going to cool it, cool it down a little bit, intensify it. Right, I've got all those colors ready to go. My water should have soaked in to the background, and I need one of my biggest brushes to work with, and I want to go, I don't want to go close to the face to start with to see how the, it's all doing. I want to go close to the neck of the alpaca with one of those colors to see how is that how is that going to do that furry look along the edge of the alpaca so i don't want to go straight in where it's going to be um, a big disaster near the face i'm going somewhere that's not so dangerous down here where i can maybe mop it up or adjust it and it's so important that your background is good and wet and not going to dry quickly. So I think I'm okay to go down the neck of the alpaca here. And I want to show you something that you can do with a soft brush. I have um, one, two, three or four types of soft brush here. My favorite is this um, goat hair pipe brush. I got it from the Manly's Asian store downtown. And it's lovely, use dry to softly I'm going to softly just sweep out, sweep out away from the alpaca to soften the edge. And I have to make sure I clean that brush on a towel frequently. There's also the haki brush or hake brush that you can use for things like that, softening the edge. And specific, you can buy specific brushes that are very soft and um, good for sweeping out the edges to keep them nice and soft. Now, I don't want to overdo this. I'm overdoing it a little bit to demonstrate it and wipe them, wipe them clean on a towel if you're going to do that. You could also use in a pinch, you could use a fan brush to do the same thing, but they have a rather regular look to them. And the, the lovely irregular goat or sheep hair brushes is, is um, beautiful. Nice for clouds. So I'm going to put those over there and continue on with my background. 
and take some cerulean. I'm going, those piles of color I made, I'm going back and forth between them, picking up a different one each time I go to my palette for a bit of paint so that I have a slightly different blue all the time. I'm coming up close to the face and I'm not going right up to my pencil line. I'm leaving, leaving about, oh, do you want me to go metric or imperial? I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch, about three millimeters. Now my paper's starting to dry up here. So I'm gonna get up here and get some color in before we have too much drying happening. And I want you to think about how I'm using my brush. I'm not stroking like this in straight lines. I'm kind of jiggling it around so that I don't get any, any um, brush lines. And I'm not going right up to my pencil line. So my background is I've dried it with the hairdryer and it didn't go as well as I wanted it to. Um, again, I'm not focusing you really, really have to focus when you do this, which is why I sort of suggested we don't record during that bit, because the if like right here where the paint was thicker than the water, the water flowed out towards the paint. But here where the paint was thinner than the water, it started to flow into the face. So I have my trusty Kleenex here to uh, try and stop that. But what I'm looking for is a few places like the ears um, where you've got that lovely soft edge, the back, um, the neck, just a few places where we have that soft edge because we can fill a lot of the rest in with the white paint afterwards. And I have some masking fluid on here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because we're gonna work on the eyes, the focal point and really get those down to start with. And they have like a base color on them and the base color is phthalo blue. So I need a little brush. I'm going into the eyes now. And I just want pure phthalo blue, not, not too concentrated because it's an under, it's a color that's under the rest of the colors. And I want to fill those eyes in first with that phthalo blue as the, and I have the little white sparkles on there in masking fluid. I'm putting that on, I need an even smaller brush. I need my number uh, two brush. So I've changed to that one for this. And I loved on this picture how the white hair, sort of like the, the bangs here, uh, came right over the eye. So that's why I thought masking fluid would be nice right there to get a little bit of that hair coming over the eye. I don't know if you call it fur or hair when it's so um, hair-like. I have the phthalo blue on there. And I want it to soak in and dry so I can work on another little bit right now while that while that is soaking in. And uh, I want to work on something I'm not going to I'm not going to smush the eyes or um, do anything like that. So I might work on the inside of the ears. And I do have to be a little bit careful of the eyes when I do that. But something that's not close to the eyes so I can. Um, I can. Uh, you know, not work wet in wet is what I'm trying to say. I've lost my language. Right, so to work inside the ears, there's a sort of a pinkish, beige color inside the ears. And I'll mix that using raw sienna and some rose to make a warm, a warm beige for inside the ears. And I got that, I'll bring my other palette over. So I've got the raw sienna and a little bit of rose. Now I can, I can put some cooler layers in these ears later to, um, to darken them a little bit. But first I'm gonna start with the warm layer and I need some very clean water. Switch out my water pot. Sorry, I banged the thingy there. And I want the ear to be soft. Now, all this is dry now. My paper's dry. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to wet the air, the ear, not the air, the ear, a little bit. 
where I want the fur to kind of fuzz out into the inner part of the ear. And then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, I want control. And then put the the uh, inner ear color just in on the left side there, letting it flow back into the the wet, the wet fur on the right hand side. It's also flowing up into the ear at the top, which is really nice. It will often do all kinds of things by itself and you never can quite predict where everything's going to flow. But that's kind of the nice thing about watercolor. You don't always have to control everything. Also, I want a little bit of the top of the ear to be soft. So I've wet my brush cleaned it and dried it off a little bit. And I'm just going to agitate it just at the top here to soften, just to soften that a little bit at the top and put a little bit of shadow on the edge here. I don't want to do it too much because it will all flood out into the background and I want to have that little bit of white showing. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing for the right ear on the other side because the fur kind of comes into the ear so I want to wet wet this side of the ear where the fur is coming across from the ear fold take my smaller brush and that raw sienna rose mix and again, don't make your mix too watery because if your mix is too watery, you won't, you won't get the right um, flow direction in the paint. And you can even use the tip of your brush to make some of those hairs. See at the bottom here, need a little bit more rose in that mix, a little bit more warmth. and up to the tip. Now I will be putting a little bit of blue on later to add some shadow. A little bit of, a little bit of shadow in here. I just wet that bit. That's okay, I'll make a very soft shadow in there. And a little bit here. This is my number two brush, so I'm working very delicately on those little shadows in the fur. Now there is, there is more shadow on here, but I have a little bit of background from the blue. So I can maybe use that as the shadow and then come out with some white paint later to model that. Also up here in the, I have, I have the, masking fluid on here, but I can also add shadows around the masking fluid while it's there. Dilute this down. And start putting in some of those. All this while the eyes are drying ready for the next layer. Now it's got to the point now where I want to put a little bit of cobalt blue with this mix to cool it down a little bit, gray it down a little bit. Because I want to have a slightly cooler shadow over here under this part. A little bit more blue, a little bit more gray. And see, I've still got the warm, I've got the warm um, color up here and then I'm pulling the bluer gray down to the other side. I don't want to um, gray down the whole mix, just part of it. I want some shadow around the top of this eye.
I want to go back to the warm color again. This shadow has a bit more warmth and I can do it wet in wet. I already have the cool gray there. Back to my cool gray here. Under all of this, if you haven't used masking fluid for the, the bangs here, you can use just brush strokes to form it. And what I want at the base of this shadow coming into the nose is a very soft shadow. So I'm taking my just wet brush, just a bit of water and agitating that color in at the base. I think I want a more uh, violety gray. So I put a little bit of little bit of rose and blue. And then I need to dilute that a bit. And I want a slightly more violet gray to come down this side. And around this side of the eye. And again, I'm going to soften Soften that in, that shadow comes, I'm going to look at that shadow, it comes under here and along the nose here. I want a bigger brush. I want to get that shadow down here before it gets too, too dry. And I want to soften this edge before it gets too dry. And I kind of like that slightly violety gray color for that. And on this side of the face and make the curve of the mouth right there. Soften that in with my wet brush. And I've started to sculpt the face a little bit. Down the center of the nose here is quite light and around the sides of the nose is slightly darker, but only slightly. If you go too dark, it's going to not look like a sort of off-white fur. The left-hand side, the shadows are a little bit warmer. So I'm taking a little bit of that violet gray and adding a bit more of that that warm beige into it for the left side of the face here or nose and down there. Wet brush. The fur is so soft that most of the time you want to be a little bit cooler. It's coming down here. You want to be having soft lines on this llama to show the softness of the fur right right here on the nose is a little little bit that is darker and i'm actually going to leave some harder lines there because it's sort of like a, you can really see the shadows in the fur. If I leave it a little bit harder, you can see those more clearly. Uh, I'm doing all this to let the eyes dry enough to get the next layer on. And the shadow layers need to dry before you put another shadow layer on too. What we could do with a, I've got my number two brush is put a little bit more of the hair depth, the, what I call the bangs here, which it really, really is. It's why, why I'm not sure whether to call it hair or fur because so often it just looks like hair. I have the more violety gray. I'm using the very tip of my number two brush, sort of wiggling it to put in some of this curly, curly long, here, here, wispy, 
rather untidy. It's a little, little warmer over here, the shadow. And if you get too dark, you can go back in with your white paint and uh, put the light here in afterwards. That's the lovely thing about the white paint. I'm getting a little bit more cobalt blue now. Take in, I want to get a little bit of uh, burnt sienna with that too. It's slightly darker. And just in here is, is a bit darker than the rest of the shadow. It'll help, what it'll do is it'll help point to the eye, putting this in a little bit darker. And uh, just here too, just a bit of dark. Soften the edge again. And I'm gonna just touch the blue to see, I think it's dry, definitely dry enough to do the next layer on the eyes. And I really want to get the eyes looking real so that I have a, my focal point there to help me judge my other features and my other colors. I'm looking at my notes uh, just to make sure I do what I say in my notes. So I put for the eyes, I'm using ultramarine blue and thalo blue, burnt sienna, sepia, and permanent rose. I'm using an awful lot of colors there to get that lovely dark, um, dark eye color. And I, I much prefer to do that rather than use black because black is a very, it's not a color for a start. It's a very dead flat color. It doesn't reflect the light very well. And if you use all of those beautiful colors to mix something that's very close to black, what you see is the, a real variety of those colors. And they often separate a little bit and it gives you a lovely natural look to the eye. So um, let's get my other palette for a minute. I don't have enough space. Ah. Oh, we need to put that on the floor. So ultramarine blue, bigger, bigger paintbrush. And phthalo blue. We've got a strong, a strong intense blue and a warm blue as well. And a burnt sienna. That will give it some warmth. The sepia will cool it down and darken it some more and the rose will warm it up. So to go back and forth between the warm and the cool until you get something that's just right. I'm looking at this, it looks like a lovely, lovely indigo black color. Again, I could use indigo, but indigo is just um, a color mixed with black by the manufacturer and, and I prefer this way. A little brush again. I want to leave some of that, some of that blue showing, not a lot, but um, I can lift, I can lift a little bit of this black off so that I'll be able to see a little bit of that blue in the light. Oh, it's still a little bit wet actually, isn't that strange? It felt dry. So I'm going to put that black on or the dark mix that I made, I'm calling it black, but it's uh, very dark mix. It looks black as I put it on. And when that has dried, I will lift a little bit out and you'll see the phthalo blue underneath. And it will give the eyes a lovely intense look. We want to have the different colors and the light in them. I've got those on. We need to keep that black in our palette because other places that you will need the black are in the nostrils and the mouth. And we can even put those in right now. If you, the nostrils have a little bit of brown, more brown in them. So I think a great place to go right now is the mouth or down, down between the down between the upper lips, and then there's a little, 
little dark path on the, the mouth here. Actually sort of a little V here as well. And the mouth, there's that lovely, that lovely smiley curve to the mouth. I don't want it quite as dark for that. So I'm gonna um, dilute out that dark color, that dark black gray color. So it's got a little bit of water in the dilution. And I'm gonna bring that up. That's just not quite as black as the nose and the center of the mouth. And a little bit here, a little bit here. And I've got that diluted color. It's a little bit more lip here, but it's not as dark. Just use that diluted color to take the lip down there. Also, it's not as dark quite down the side of the nostril here so I've used that diluted color and then the actual nostrils are much more brown so what, what we need to do is add a bit more let's have it over here I put a little bit more sepia and maybe a little bit more burnt sienna here so it's a, a much browner color not as much water if you want dark colors don't add very much water just enough that you can dilute your paint and paint with it okay nostrils put those in with that that uh, more brownie color it's helpful when you get these dark features and it helps you adjust the rest of your values to see what you're you need to be painting because around the size of these nostrils it's definitely not as dark as the the parts that don't have any light around the side I can dilute that that brown I'm taking some of that brown over here into this uh, cerulean blue color and I'm diluting it out to a, a very light gray I'm putting a little bit of extra a little bit of extra in here And I'm finding it very helpful now. I've got the, the, the face features kind of looking at me and giving me some help with where I'm going with the, with the painting. There's a lot more to do to the face features, definitely, but you don't want to do them while this paint is too wet. What we can do is the fur coming down here with a very tiny brush. Now you've got a choice. You can use a number two or number one, or I have a scripts liner, which is also really good for... Uh, fur but I don't need it that long at the moment I don't think I think my number two brush is going to be just fine I need a, a warmer brown color so that that sort of gray I made here I'm going to add some raw um, no burnt sienna to it and a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of cobalt blue Cobalt blue is to make it more gray, a gray brown, not a, a bright brown. I got that with my little brush. And I'm using the very, very point of my little brush. And wispy, wispy fur coming down from the lower lip. It's actually quite quite dark compared to some of the lights in the llama. I'll put that, those sort of wispy bits in. See how slowly you sort of have to go with the with the um, details at this point. Okay. 
pretty slow. I have some going back into the dark brown over here, this dark brown, and mix it with a bit of this on the edge. So I've got a combination here. And there's a little there's a little dark shadow just here around the eye that's that's kind of needed to make that eye stand out. And down this side of the face here is darker than the middle of the face, but it has a lot of white fur. So you can either put the white fur on afterwards or with the point of the brush, make, just come, come in a little closer. I'm going to do both. I'm going to come in later with some white paint. I need a little bit more rose in this to warm it up. I've got that, I've got this, trying to get it where the light's not shining. In. I have this brown color here that's got blues and browns in it. I want it a little warmer. I put a little rose in, a little bit more cobalt in. I don't want it quite, quite so pink. I wanted a warm, that warm gray. I'm going to use the point of my brush to, to make the fur. I'm, what I'm doing is negative painting. I'm painting the shadows between, between the fur. I have to go up, up under the eye so that the eye stands out. And sometimes, I'm putting it in dry at the moment, but sometimes it needs a little bit of blurring because you don't want too many sharp lines. I get down here and I want to use my wet brush, a little bit more rose, and blur this, blur that bit a little bit. And also under the eye here. sort of blurring those areas with a wet brush. Same um, here. So you can't see the glare. Really hard not to see the glare of the wet paint. But some of it I want to show as negative painting and some just as blurred shadow under there. Blurred shadow here. Just there. Softening that in with my wet brush. I'm going to go to my Number four brush, slightly bigger. And a bit more cobalt blue, that gray. I want to put this area in here, a little bit of shadow here. Be very, very careful not to go too dark with these values because you can darken them up later if you go too dark, your fur is not going to read as off-white. It's going to read as gray or much darker. So you really have to pay attention to mixing a lot of water with your grays. Because you can go darker like I did here. You can go back with the second layer, a little bit more here. But it's very difficult to take the, the dark paint off. Underneath the chin here is slightly darker and warmer. Oh, then I add a little bit of burnt sienna to that brown. And come down here. Just 
again using a wet brush to agitate the edges so that they are soft and I've left a little bit of dry edge hard edge for the lip here this is is wet going back in with some of that dark brown well, not really dark brown, darker, cooler brown. And take some of those stripes of fur starting in the wet paint and coming down into the dry area to give a little fur look and here too. I'm looking up, looking up here by the mouth and it's a bit darker there. So I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of dark paint to that area, it's still wet. See, this is all baby steps. That's why this one's gonna take a while. My eye is, I'm pretty sure it's dry. I have a, I have a little brush called an eradicator. This is specifically made for watercolor to scrub paint out. I have an even smaller one actually. I'd use this one, but I'm wetting it. And I'm going to scrub out a little bit of that, that black and dab it to give a bit of blue light to the eyes. I dabbed too much there, got too wet, but it's okay. I'll put a bit of the black back in. It look, makes them look luminous. So you can see the blue shining through from underneath the dark paint now that I've wiped some off. I still need to go back when that's dry and add a bit more shadow, but I have now that sort of luminous look of rounded, um, wet eyes, appealing eyes. And they'll be good till, they, till I need to go back in and just do a little bit more work on them. While that's drying, I can work on the nose. This is all dry here now. So we have a, a very soft look to add to the nose. I'll get this painting. This needs to be wet on the top so that this dark gray all becomes soft here, making the nose look very, very soft and velvety. So we need a a cool dark grey and we have quite a bit of cool dark grey here with all of those colours I mix for black which I'll go over again which were ultramarine, phthalo blue, um, sepia, burnt sienna, a little bit of rose. We have a, a nice grey and I need to wet the nose on the top first just here to keep the top of it soft and velvety. And again, you can't have too much water or it's going to flood all the wrong way. But if you don't have enough, you're not going to get that lovely, lovely soft velvety look to the nose. I'll put that in and go to a smaller brush. Smaller brush will give you control. And I will stop in a minute to make sure that you're following along and, and able to keep up. I'm going to get a little bit of rose just to warm up the gray a little bit. Don't want it to be too, too harsh. And mine is, is flooding up a bit too much into that water. It's a bit too wet. I will control that in a moment with my thirsty brush. I'm leaving a dry white edge at the bottom. And now I need to use my thirsty brush to control the top and my Kleenex. I need to have a clean brush and suck up some of that, that gray that flooded up too much. Keep my thirsty brush clean and suck that up. 
It will keep the it will keep the nice velvety soft look to the nose. And having ultramarine blue in that mix will stop it from staining too badly because you can lift ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and quite a bit of sepia. Now, it's not dark enough at the bottom. So I need to wait just a, a minute or so because it's still wet and I don't want it flooding up here again, getting this too, too dark. So I need to test the waters carefully and see, can I get the dark in here? Yes, I think so. I think I can, it's just, just right to get the dark in here. Because it does need to be, it's kind of a, um, a, a lovely shape, that dark part of the nose coming up into the soft area. And again, the top, I just need to soften that in a little bit, but I can't use a very wet brush because it's already wet here. I don't want to be um, making too much wet. So I have to be very, very careful with the amount of water that's on my brush. It's minimal. And at the bottom here, where I left that white line, again, I'm going in with a wet brush and a tiny bit of light gray, just to, to take that white back to a very light gray there. The nose is kind of important because it's a different texture, a different texture to the fur. It's, it's soft and velvety. So you want to have that kind of look to it. The muzzle too. The muzzle is soft and velvety. So it's the same sort of procedure. I want to get clean water. I won't have a nice white look if the water isn't clean. So I've got another pot of clean water here. Work on, work on the muzzle. So again, I want to wet the areas that I want to be soft. And I don't, I don't want it to um, flood again too far in the wrong direction. So I have to what I'm doing is I've got my towel and I'm taking some of the water off my brush so it's not making it too wet. Just want a really soft look. The edge of the the edge of the muzzle here is a soft brown. Again, I can scoop scoop some of that with my thirsty brush and closer to the the lips I guess they are is a more bluey more bluey gray and that's going too much into the a bit too much into that I have to really be careful here add a little bit of phthalo blue to my gray so that as I come down here it's a much more phthalo blue type gray different sweeping my brush strokes curving them away from the middle of the lip and outwards into the cheeks with I don't know what you call them I guess they're kind of like cheeks, aren't they? I should take some animal um, physiology, maybe, so I know what I'm talking about here. Just liken it to what we know about people. They look very human, don't they? With that little smile and those beautiful eyes.
a little bit more in the nostrils. And very, very carefully with a quite dry, quite dry brush. I want to sweep a little bit more, a little bit more of that color out, outwards, a little bit more direction to it. And a little bit here. Quite often what you can do is a little bit of sort of just dotting to get the color in without having too, too, too much going on. There is quite a shadow from the nose here. I'm taking a little bit more shadow under the, the nose. A little bit more dark here. As this is drying, it just needs a little bit more dark at the bottom there. A little bit more shadow under the nostril. And I don't think the eyes often look dry on mine, but I think I need to leave them. So I'm going to pause the recording at the moment and I want to see how you're all getting on and uh, give mine a bit of a dry with the hairdryer, I think. There we go. And um, that's wonderful. Okay, good. I think this is the time has come for my eyes and even my hair here to get rid of the masking fluid so I can do more work without being um, restricted by that. So I'm going to get rid of my masking fluid. And I made sure that my paper was perfectly dry with the hair dry before this. Otherwise, I'm going to either tear the paper or smudge the paint or something horrible getting off the masking fluid. Now I'm trying to remember where I put masking fluid. I didn't put much. I just really wanted to get some light in the eyes and keep that soft fur going over them. And I don't, I don't think I put any anywhere else, as far as I know. Yeah, I think that's it. Now the eyes are just about finished, but I need, now that I've washed some of that back, I need to put a little bit of um, shadow back in them. And even the tiniest bit of blue, I'm gonna get a little bit of tiny, tiny bit of cerulean and put in these ones here just a touch of cerulean so it's not quite so not quite so white in that in the closer one then i'm going to my blackish blackish gray to put the shadow under the the eye and a little bit across the top just to put a, make them look a bit more round. The other thing that I will need to do right at the end are some beautiful, like there's some beautiful, beautiful eyelashes. I won't do those till the end in case I mess, make a mess of them when I do the rest of the fur. But under the eyes is a lovely little dark, dark patch just here kind of shows them off, like putting a little bit of eyeliner on to show off the eye just underneath there and, and down the side. Have to take very, very close attention to these eyes. Also at the bottom of this eye here. Back to my cerulean blue. On a little blue, a blue shadow in there and here. Blue, cerulean blue is a lovely gentle color for, for shadows. 
And anything reflective in a painting like water or eyes are going to be reflecting some of the light around and light from the sky, light from the water and places like that. So cerulean blue is a great one for getting that sort of reflective look with a bit of gentle blue, just agitating a little bit more color off there, just a little bit. Also on the inside of this eyeball, using my brown, sort of brown gray. If you want to mix a quick brown gray, just sepia with some cobalt. Mix, it mixes you quite a quick, quick brownish gray. Get a little bit of shadow around the eye here. Anything you can do, anything you can do to draw attention to the eyes, because the, the eyes are really important in this picture. So these little details around the eyes, little shadows, they're like pointers to an important part of your picture. Shadows under your, under the hair that's hanging down over the eye. Just putting a little bit of shadow behind that. And I can blend it in if I feel it's too, too harsh. I can take a wet brush and blend it in a little bit. Just makes it show up a little bit more to have a little bit of shadow in there. Makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And do a little bit more shading on the nose, just a little bit of shadow under that nostril. That one, take it in there. And I said I would come back to the ears and put some cooler shadow on the ears. I'm going to zoom out just a bit. You can see the ears. And you can see it's quite light now, that first layer that I put on. So we need to cool that down a little bit. And again, I don't want to lose the softness. So I want to wet, wet this a little bit before I put some more shadow in. That you wet a lot of the ear. And I need a, a co cobalt blue with some raw sienna and the rose. So the, the raw sienna and rose was what I started with for those ears. But I don't want it so warm. I want it much cooler. So that means I've got to have some cobalt blue in there. It's a soft, it's a very soft blue. It's a warm blue. So it's not going to take it down too, too far. We want it close, close to the color that I've used, but a little bit cooler. So that I have a little bit more depth to the, the ear just close to the head. And there's actually quite a, quite a line coming up just here so that the, the head kind of shows up there. And the fur is a little bit, a little bit um, cooler. I'm getting a little bit of, a bit of fur in there too. And bring this back with my wet brush to make it much softer. It's almost like you're like brushing the hair at this point. You take your brush and kind of brush back as if you're brushing the, the llama's ears, keeping it in the direction that the hair is coming out of the ear. There might be some little this is close to the tip where the, um, where the shadow. And again, I'm going to take my wet brush and soften that all in. I'm 
Now I'm. Oh, yeah, I've got to do the other one. Just having a think. I've got to do this here too. Just having a think about the white fur. I'll put in, soften this with water. Got that um, that grey. Oh, I need some. Need some dark just in here. And around the hair again. And close to the tip of the ear. I'm going back to that one. I'm all over the place. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to that mix to warm it up again. Want a little bit of warmth on this side of the ear. Why you ask? Because that's what's in the that's what's in the photograph. And on this side, I'm looking at the photograph and the some of the shadows in the air, ear. I keep saying air, it's not air, it's an ear. Some of the shadows are um, darker, a much darker brown, warmer brown color. I'm putting those in. Now they look, they look, a little too dark at the moment because they're wet and because I haven't got the white fur that I'm going to put over the top with the white paint. So that will make a difference to this. And every dark you put in makes your lights look lighter. And that's, that's really a key when you want to show something as white. You really have to have a few good darks in there to do that. Otherwise it doesn't, doesn't read as white. I'm just putting a bit more, now that I've erased the masking fluid from the hair, the bangs sort of area, I want to just put a little bit more shadow, a little bit more negative painting behind some of these hairs. And really, you can have your hairstyle any way you like, because they all have very different, very different hairstyles. I need a, a very pink that I need the rose and raw sienna. In the right ratio. Need a little bit more pinky shadow down this hair, side of the hair. I've got a big blob of water on my I would not normally ever have my paints over my painting area. The only reason I have them there is so you can um, see what I'm doing. I would never risk getting blobs of paint or water or maybe um, mess from the bottom of my palette on my paper. Otherwise, I'm, I just want to point that out because um, sometimes you can think that that's Okay, and it's not really, it's just, just so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm really, really focused on the face a lot, which is important because that's what we, that's what we want to show as our focal point. A little bit more little bit more shadow here, so a little bit more, so that the nose appears lighter and the eyes are pointed to with the shadow. Mm. 
And that shadow coming out here a little bit more. And now I've got the lighter shadows in. I really do see that the one down here is a bit darker. I'm using sepia and burnt sienna, a little bit of cobalt to get these shadows here a little bit darker. Now that I have those first ones darkened up a little bit. And I put them in like hair, fur or hair, and wet brush. I'm going to pull, pull them in with a wet brush. Soften them up a little bit. And we have a whole neck area here that is the darkest area on the llama, just under the chin and coming down here. So again, we're going to wet to soften, to soften this edge and here and here. Make sure we don't get too harsh. And it's quite, quite brown there. So I want my burnt sienna, cobalt. Yeah, burnt sienna and cobalt should be, should be good for this. And it is quite dark. A little bit more burnt sienna and Janine and I were just talking um, I just put it on here and decide but really um, if you're not sure have a piece of you know have a piece of paper a piece of watercolor paper by your side off cuts from when you cut your paper so that you can test I, I've just done this enough that I will test it on my actual painting which is not a good way to teach you. I've realized you sh I should be teaching you to test it on a piece of paper before you put it on your watercolor paper. I, I know enough that I can quickly put water on mine and I can quickly modify my color. I just know how to do it quickly. But really, if you're having trouble with your dilutions, with how dark or light your color is use a piece of test paper to help you now as i'm coming down under the chin of the llama some of the paper is wet and some of the paper is dry so you can see there's little white flecks where my paper is dry and then it's softening coming softening out to the edge here where it's wet so that it goes into a very soft edge which is what I want I want this the edge of the llama's neck here to be very soft keep it wet but I do want to have the shape of the hair fur whatever you would like to call it painted here with my brush with the white still showing and every Every brush stroke that I do has to be in the direction of that fur. It's all following it kind of on the photo I'm looking at, the fur kind of comes around here and curls a little bit as it comes over to the left here. This is still wet up here and this is the very dark point. I'm going into my warm black. The black I did for the eyes with a little bit of sepia in it to warm it up and I'm just charging just putting with the tip of my brush a little bit of dark paint into those areas under the chin. I've got sepia and burnt sienna mixed with the ultramarine blue and the Thalo blue to make a, a warm dark brown. 
There's some patches in the llama's fur here that are quite dark. Remember what I said? That will make your that will make your whites look white. You got those dark patches in. I'm washing that brush going to a slightly smaller one because I want to model and a warmer brown. I'm going to the burnt sienna sepia brown and a tiny bit of cobalt to just take it down a notch so it's not too, too brown. And here we need a little bit more modeling of the fur. Do you want me to go in a little, a little closer? I have a small brush, number two. And I already have under here that, that darker brown wash. So I can put over the top of that dark brown wash, I can start to put a little bit more dark fur modeling in. Now I'm not going to do all of this. This is a long process painting something like this. Ideally, you need about eight hours for a painting like this. It's not something that we can do in a like two, three hour lesson, but I can give you, I can give you most of the basics and working on, working on all these things like the, the fur, they just take a bit of time. I zoom out a little bit again because we haven't even got to the back of the llama. And actually, because the face and the eyes are the most important, the back is where you can get much more loose with, um, with a wash. So if you wanted to go into a um, burnt sienna and burnt sienna, sienna and ultramarine blue wash that's fairly burnt sienna-ish and um, fairly, fairly watery. I'm going to do one uh, like a very loose wash here where I'm loosely putting in those colors. I'm going to get a little bit of the uh, raw sienna too so that we have a little bit of the raw sienna coming in here. And I want to soften up this top before it gets too out of control here. Some cobalt blue or some shadows. Just I've just got cobalt blue on my brush with some shadows here down the spine. What I don't want to do with the body is draw attention to it because the face is where I want the attention. But I don't want to leave it pure white either because that really would draw attention to it a lot. So I've put that very, very loose, very loose wash on there with big brush strokes. And as I get down to the corner of the tape, put a little bit more I'm going to get the burnt sienna ultramarine mix with a lot of burnt sienna come in there with some fur shape coming down close to the edge of the tape a little bit of that in so it's not it's not very much detail it's more just let's get some quick quick um wash in there maybe a little bit more raw sienna see i'm letting some of these colors blend wet and wet just putting a little bit of raw sienna on there a bit of raw sienna in the neck bit of cobalt blue what I'm doing with these colors right now the cobalt blue the raw sienna 
the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix is kind of letting them a lot of them just mix on the paper wet and wet and as i'm putting the wash on i'm kind of keeping my brush strokes again in the direction of fur now this this area under the chin is still not dark enough, but I want to do a, another wash on that when this wash is, is dry. We have a few things to work on yet. I've got water splats everywhere. Like I say, this, this painting is a good eight hour painting, really. It's not meant to be a, a quick one. And just like my first one, I really feel that the background's not dark enough. And on my first one, I wet after the whole armor was finished and dry, I wet it again and put darker background in because I wanted it darker. It's a really dangerous thing to do, um, but I did manage to get it to work. It's very hard to get the background dark enough the first time with a wet background. And if you notice like this one, it's just a bit darker and the, and the llama stands out, alpaca, I keep calling the llama, alpaca stands out better against a darker background. So I'm going to pause again and dry everything. And I just want to go over the, doing the white paint and maybe the straw, the straw in the mouth is a nice touch to have. It was in the photo in having a little bit of um, grass in the mouth kind of makes him look a little goofy. They, they, all the photos they saw, they had a little bit of a dry grass or something in their mouth. And they, I, I just like the look it gave them. So let's just uh, have a pause, zoom the video and bring this down a little bit, maybe zoom in again, because I'm going to work on the eyes. And I have my uh, Micron Pigma pen black. 005. It's a very, I think it's the finest one you can get in the Micron Pigmas. And I'm going to use this for the eyelashes because they are so very fine. And I can get a lovely, lovely fine line with this, this liner. You can use a 01 as well. They come in many sizes and come in many colors, actually. Uh, the eyelashes in. I'm putting putting a few more in than I can see in my picture. I think when I went close up on the um, one actually on the iPad, I could see see more eyelashes. Any fine detail, and and also with the um, with the fur, you've got choices. You can use the white paint. Or I have the two that I like are the Uniball white pen or the, Pos the Posca. The, the fine one is, is not as great as the thicker ones. Let's see. It's one of those ones where you have to shake it and get it going. But I find all the white pens can get gummed up. The white in them gets kind of gummed up and um, doesn't work too well for you. So I that's the Posca pen. The Uniball pen gets gummed up the least. And you could also use that for some of your white fur if you wanted to. Get a few wispy, wispy fur bits. Or my favorite, my absolute favorite, and I've tried all the different whites. I've tested them all on black paper, and this is the best. The Dr. P.H. Uh, Martin's bleed proof white it's not cheap this is an old bottle it was 1090 I think my new bottle was 1590 or something but it lasts for years I only bought a new bottle um, my old bottle has still got a third of it left I bought a new bottle so I had one for class and one for home so they've got two different ones but it is the best white to use on a watercolor it's water soluble I put it in a little ceramic tray like this and it's all dried up all I need to do to get it working again is put some cl very clean water in it. And uh, just like it's any watercolor, you can get it reconstituted with some clean water. And remember, it's white. So if you put a little bit of dirty in that water in there, you're going to get a lovely, lovely gray. 
and you need a very, very, this is where I'm going to use my liner brush. It's, this is a two over zero liner brush. Once they get zero in the number, I don't know what all of them mean, this number over zero, it just means they're thin. And uh, maybe someone can, can explain all the, what the, I know that as they go down in number, like, you know, four, two, one, they get smaller and then zero is small. And then it's sort of zero, zero, and that's small. And zero, zero, zero is very small. And then they get sort of two over zero. And, and I don't quite know what that means, except pretty small. But I like using the liner brush is nice and long, which means you can get lovely long pieces of hair. You can pull them out with a lovely curved sort of shape to get them looking fur-like and nothing, not pen, not anything, looks as beautiful as this, this white paint from um, PH Martins. So you can spend a lot of time then. The ears have an incredible amount of fur on the inside. And the only way to really get it over that shadow looking correct is to do this afterwards, unless you are an absolutely immaculately skilled painter, which I'm not. And you can control all of that wet and wet to your absolute advantage. Then this is the way to go. Putting in the the lovely white fur after the shadow and at the tips of the ears here and here. And this side. That's why I wasn't too worried about my soft edge here. I knew that I wanted to put some um, some fur in with the white paint. And I got over here. In the, this area too, if you want to put a bit more straggly hair over your shadows, so your shadows didn't work out too well, you can do that. They have lovely white eyelashes as well as the dark eyelashes and the hair coming over the eyes, which is so sweet. And I can get that soft look on the edge of the head and, and on the edge of the neck with not just that soft edge that was wet and wet, but now by putting these little tiny uh, white strokes. If, if you don't have some of this um, Dr. P.H. Martin's white in your paint collection, I know it's expensive, but it's really worth it. It's one thing I think that's very worth spending the money on. You'll only need to buy it once. The only reason I use a lot is because I use it for my classes. People borrow it. Uh, I use it for demonstrations. And, and of course it gets used up a lot quicker, but if you buy one, one bottle of it, that will last you all your painting days. So. And I literally have tried every white I think there is out there. Gouache, gouache in different brands, um, Chinese white, all the white pens. White acrylic is much too um, thick and gummy. And it, you know, this watercolor white, you can blend it in afterwards. You can wash it back afterwards. You can mix it with your watercolor paints. It's, it's you're never going to have that shiny gouache type look on your painting that's going to spoil it. It's also great for getting rid of mistakes because it's a warm white, sort of the color of the paper. And if you make a mistake, quite often you can cover it up with this white. Um, you know, for supposing, um, supposing, well, here I lost a bit of the white on the nose. I can go back and reclaim that. 
where I didn't, my paint ran a little bit too much and go back and reclaim it with the white. If I got a spot of paint somewhere, I can probably paint it over with the white and, and disguise it. It's, it's great. I'm going to put a little bit more hair up here. So I'm, I'm getting a bit off camera here, sorry. Let's zoom out a little bit more, I'm getting a little bit close. So that that's that's some of your final your final steps is a thin brush, preferably a script liner brush, which is long. This one is a Princeton script liner. I think it was about seven dollars from um, iron oxide. I love it. The handle is very soft, and it's kind of bulges out here, which makes it lovely to to hold. And um, this is my favorite script liner, this Princeton one. And I was surprised. Princeton is a very good brand of brushes and they've come out with some good economy ones. And I was so surprised that this was only around $7, maybe $7.30, $7.50, something, that I grabbed it because I loved the soft handle and the color of the handle. And it's been my favorite ever since for doing something like this. It's just lovely. So I'm going down the neck, putting a bit more, a bit more hair on there. You could go on for a long time with the hair, putting in a bit. Here I need to put more shadow. And one thing I need to do is put, put that lovely little piece of um, straw in, in his, in his mouth. It really sort of makes it, I think. The straw is raw sienna. And um, because raw sienna is a little bit bright for most of it, I can put, put some of the highlights in with pu pure raw sienna. But you need a little bit of little bit of cobalt blue in with that to just take it, gray it down a little bit. And a thin brush, have my number two. And put that, that bit of, bit of grass in his mouth. And again, I'm going to show you something with the, the PH Martins white in one second. Get that little bit of grass in. And he needs a bit coming out the other side. I made it longer than in the... wanted a little bit more dramatic than the grass in the photo. Give him a little bit more to eat. Now, I'm going to mix... A little bit of raw sienna. I'm going to do it here. A little bit of raw sienna with my PH Martins white to make a very light straw color. Now, of course, I'm going to have to clean this up afterwards. I don't want to have that in there. I'm in a big blob on my painting. I can now use this to actually paint some this in the photograph. The straw comes out to kind of a highlight out here. And I can paint it much, much lighter on top of the dark background using that, that white to, to um, make what's called body color or like gouache. The other thing I can do with that, that body color is use it on the llama if I want to. It's a very light, creamy color. And if I want to get some light creamy strokes in the fur, I can, I can use it to do some highlights. And they're all things that, that you can't do unless you have gouache usually. And I, I do have a white gouache, but I prefer, I much prefer this to the white gouache. And I have a good one. I have M. Graham's white gouache. It's a good make. And of course, you can get, you can spend a fortune also buying gouache paints if you want to have more body color, but you don't need to if you have good watercolor paints and one pot of this PH Martins white, you can make all of your watercolor paints behave like gouache by mixing it with the, um, with the white. So it's a, it's an extremely versatile thing to, to own. And I could get carried away going on with this painting forever and ever, but I think um, I think we're getting close to probably um, the end of our painting patience, maybe. 
know, I don't know about you. I get to a point where I have to take a break for a while be, because I get to, I, I just get, my neck gets sore. I get a little bit too involved in it and I need to take a break to see what I'm doing. But that's sort of as far as I'm going with it today. I'm going to uh, stop the video and ask some, you know, if you've got any questions or how you were doing and, and uh, hopefully you, you enjoyed doing the alpaca or you're going to practice it again.